Hello everyone, I'm the Holy Hermit and I welcome you to episode 5 of our podcast. This one is going to be extra special because I have someone awesome with me today. So let me just shut up and let the guy say a few words to you and your job as a viewer is to figure out who he is. So, Sam, would you please introduce yourself? <laughs> There's going to be spoilers. Yeah. G'day Ziggy Day here. Oh, who is it? <laughs> Thank you, Bobby Ziggy Day. Welcome, guys. Awesome yeah. to be here. All right. Welcome to our podcast, guys. Now, I say our podcast because I have to tell you a little backstory before we start the whole thing. This gentleman here and I, we actually did a video a long time ago. And by, by that, I mean, he helped me out when I was like a tiny little fish in the ocean. And I still am, by the way. <laughs> So, you know, he's not listening right now because I've, I've asked him to, you know, close his ears and all, but um, he's been awesome to me. He's a good friend of mine. And when I wanted to do, you know, the real official podcast and invite a guest on it, I wanted him to be the first person. So there he is today. This man has so many awesome things to share with us about Diablo 3. So here we go, guys. We're going to kick into the podcast. And Mr. D Ziggy Jeez, Lisa, how are you doing today? Inflating that head. Inflating that head. <laughs> hey, you didn't hear that, did you? That was not for you. Oh, right, for the right. viewers. La, 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 la. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, for those of you guys who don't know me, I am a YouTuber and live streamer. I do uh, make videos and live streams for Diablo 3, Path of Exile, Heroes, a couple of different games. Uh, Diablo 3 is kind of what started it all for me. And uh, even though I play the game less a little bit these days, I, um, I'm always keeping tabs on the game, always checking out whenever something new is added in, always reading the news, always reading the Reddit, always watching various live streams. I, I love the game. I, I just can't get enough of it, even if it doesn't hold my interest each day in terms of playing it. Yeah, I mean, he's tried, but he cannot get away from Diablo, guys, because at heart, you know, he is a demon hunter, as we know. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to have him on the show. And it's our show, not my show, because I'm an idiot. So there we go, guys. He has something to share with us. Now, I want to really get into the start of the show to get into the biggest topic there is. Now, someone here in this podcast actually went to BlizzCon. So that's definitely not me, sir. That was you. Uh, pretty oh. awesome, man. Uh, he's like, well, did I, did I really go there? No. Uh, so please do tell us about that experience, right? Because we're going to talk about different parts of Diablo, how things are changing, all that. That'll come later. But, you know, the biggest news for me is... That experience must have been something else, right? So would you please describe the whole thing for us? How did it go? Yeah, I actually uh, actually had a chance to go all the way to the USA. I'm from Australia, in case you couldn't tell from my accent, for those of you guys who don't know me. And uh, I had the chance to go out to the USA to visit BlizzCon and Anaheim and all that. Uh, just for the, just for the actual days, didn't really spend any extra time in the US. Just there for BlizzCon, but uh, that was all thanks to the guys here at Blizzard Australia. Uh, I've, I've met a few of the people in the Blizzard Australia team now. Actually, I've met pretty much all of them, and uh, they're just like excellent and really supportive. And they're trying to kind of expand things out beyond traditional journalism. They've t they typically fly out and help out with accommodation for uh, print journalists and you know website editors and stuff like that to be able to go to BlizzCon. And they knew this was going to be a big BlizzCon because back then they didn't. Say why it was going to be a big BlizzCon, but we found that when we were there because of the Overwatch announcement. But uh, they wanted to also start bringing out some YouTubers, so I was their choice for someone to bring out for that. So wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. So shout outs to the awesome team at Blizzard Australia New Zealand for taking me out there because it was an amazing experience. And uh, although Diablo 3 took a little bit of a backseat, I think, in terms of uh, announcements, uh, it was still really interesting being able to see the panels and most importantly for me, probably the biggest, one of the biggest highlights was being able to interview Wyatt Chang from the Diablo 3 development team. That was kind of like a mind-blowing awesome thing to do. Uh -huh. So yeah, I had, a, I had a great time with it. Awesome. So you did mention an awesome thing, like, you know, you're a YouTuber, that's so amazing. And you're doing the whole journalism thing and you actually did it well. Like I saw the video on Reddit, like the day, the day one when you posted it there, like I saw it and I messaged you, man, this is so amazing. So please, let's talk about that interview because I have some questions about that. Like, how did it go, by the way? Like, how did you meet him? And, and he knew you, man, that was so amazing, right? As like someone like you but you know in a smaller scale someone who makes videos and <laughs> there's such an awesome thing the man knew you he recognized you and the thumbs up in the end was like a cherry on the cake but you know how did the whole <laughs> interview go like how did you arrange that how did that like thing came to be so I, um, I arranged with the Australian New Zealand guys. They were like, you know, who, what would you be interested in covering while you're there? And I'll be like, oh, anything Diablo, hands down. Like anything Diablo, you guys can get me in touch with. Like I was like, I was like, yeah, they might be able to hook me up with like one of the artists because I had an interview with an artist in the past or something like that. And I'll like, I'll just try and like drill as much cool information out of there. But but then, but then when they they actually organised an interview with Wyatt Chang, my mind was kind of blown there. But uh, yeah, I so I went into the interview room and they're kind of like little cubicles, like soundproof cubicles. So he couldn't he couldn't see me. 
Oh, but uh, okay. I was talking outside uh, just before we went in. And, it, and, like, even before I walked in the room, even before he saw me, he was like, I recognize that voice. Wow. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, asked him about that. And he said they've watched a, watched a few of my videos and stuff like that in the past. So that was, like, awesome to hear that some yeah. of the developers have actually watched your content. But I think that's, like, that's less about me. And I think that's more about the Diablo 3 team because those mm-hmm. guys are pretty in touch with the community overall. And they, I think they do spend a lot of time watching streams and videos and stuff like that and trying to keep their finger on the pulse but the interview itself was awesome Mm -hmm. uh i actually kind of like wasted the first 10 minutes of the interview just like well not really (laughs) wasted i it wasn't a waste for me but i i just kind of like just talked to him i just wanted to chat like Ah, it was it was awesome so So wait 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 wait. if i may jump in then uh uh-huh sorry so the first 10 the guys this is secret news by the way all right that's not in the interview then the first 10 minutes are not recorded so what did you talk about that come on let's 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 spill the beans here then what was the first uh, you know we just we just talked about blizzcon and kind of what they've been up to nothing nothing too secret uh, okay. got left out of the interview i got i got the main things in the interview i think oh, but uh, right. it was just kind of good to meet someone and talk to them on a personal level rather than just going in there as a journalist because yeah. that's the thing although i was flown there with a bunch of journalists i wasn't a journalist i was just yeah. A, you know a fan being there kind of like having the opportunity to cover it but also the opportunity experience so, so that was awesome but um mm-hmm. in the in the interview we talked about uh a few different things we talked about uh season two uh about the upcoming patch kind of i tried to look at like some of the kind of overall view views and visions for the game so i asked him a bit about what uh-huh. they're currently doing with the game and whether it's gearing up for the next expansion uh-huh. but it seems like uh basically his answer was they're trying to make the most complete game they can uh now mm-hmm. and it's not so much about preparing for the expansion so i think the expansion is kind of something that's happening happening a little bit separately oh yeah but uh some cool little cool little tidbits came out of that interview yeah. and uh for those of you guys watching on my channel, I'll link it in the description below if you want to check that out if you haven't checked it out already. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll link the video as well. So guys, at the end of the video, you'll see like click on this video and you really should. You should watch the whole interview because, you know, as he's mentioning, because I will say it because he won't be able to. Uh, it was not like a journalist interview where these guys are like, OK, so what's the new feature? But you see them playing the game. You know, they don't know what to do. Like Ziggy, my friend, has been playing the game for a while. So he really asked the questions that actually had carried weight and i think that's what well, was the best part <laughs> no really because uh, it's not just me because the reddit comments were also saying the same thing that hey the questions were pretty good even so i'll link that in the in the chat but anyways well we'll move on from this what was your favorite part of the blizzcon like just anything that you enjoyed obviously the experience was amazing but like one big thing when you went there did you like anything cool there or also did you meet any fans there by any chance anyone that recognized you apart from the yeah, man himself I, I did meet a few fans there i think i probably met like I don't know, like 10, 10 separate different fans, and I went and had some drinks with some as well. It was pretty, that was pretty awesome because that doesn't happen here in Australia because Australia is such a big place, and uh-huh. a lot of my fans are US based or EU based. So actually, being in the US and having a chance to hang out with some fans was awesome. But I think probably the biggest thing for BlizzCon for me was uh, the Overwatch announcement. I mean, it uh-huh. seems kind of obvious, but just like the, the crowd's responses to that, and uh, just like the craziness of their first new IP announcement in 17 years was insane. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I did really, I did really like, as I said, the White Chain interview yeah. was also a pretty big highlight for me as well. Definitely. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, just. Yeah, just overall, it was a pretty mind blowing sort of thing. I like, I just got a real sense of like the whole community's passion there, uh-huh. and uh, even like, even though, as I said, Diablo took a bit of a back seat in terms of announcements and stuff. The stuff, the panels that they did do there, sitting there and uh, getting the community's kind of responses to that, and just being able to see all the Diablo fans in one place was pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Amazing. Did you get a chance to play like the the new levels or something, Ruins of Sesheron? Did you have a? I actually did not. No, uh, I. Uh, okay. I had very very little time to actually play anything it was pretty difficult to balance the kind of like recording imagine, content yeah. and uh you know doing interviews and getting around and also experiencing the show so diablo uh-huh. was one i missed out on but uh did get oh, it hands-on with a few other things but yeah not diablo mm-hmm. but one thing you did play and i really want your opinion on this one right because you're a pro demon hunter and i've been dying to like talk to someone who plays demon hunter class and like the big part of it, but basically season one came and went, right? What were your thoughts on it? I know you make awesome Path of Exile videos, that's something you do. So for a guy who knows how the whole ladder slash the season things work in, in a different game, it being launched into Diablo 3 and the way it played out in season one, any thoughts on that? Like basically, like how did you feel about seasons being introduced into the game? 
Yeah, as you've said, like, Path of Exile's had seasons for a while, and Diablo uh-huh. 2 have obviously had seasons. I've had a fair bit of seasonal play experience. Uh-huh. Um, and I have to say, unfortunately, I think Season 1 was a bit of a letdown overall for Diablo. Um, uh-huh. I think the kind of... The biggest thing for me, I guess, from a personal standpoint, the biggest thing for me when a new season happens is that that race to max level, that uh, that re- those first couple days, that really intense competitive first couple days. Oh yeah. Like in, when those, in, in Diablo Two, it was always a thing. In Path of Exile, it's a really big thing. Getting to end game first, getting those really good items, and starting to trade and stuff like that. But for, from the Diablo Three perspective, I think um, it was the that f- initial sort of leveling experience was overshadowed by just kind of the sheer amount of problems uh, with the game at that point in mm-hmm. uh, in terms of season, like the competition problems. Yeah. So kind of, for example, various different leveling exploits and things like that that people oh, yeah. were using. It just took away a lot of the thrill for me. And, uh, I, you know, I got the character max level, but beyond that, I kind of... Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah, I, I lost interest in the season from that point. Uh, no, I, think, uh, I think it just didn't do enough, and then just that whole host of problems, yeah, definitely I think, kind I'm of killed you. the buzz. Right, like from what I understand in terms of seasons, right? So you and I, we're playing Diablo, we're farming for loot. Rarely would we go to a random road to Alcarnas in Act 2 or whatever and explore it, right? Because you're busy farming that loot and you're enjoying the farming experience. So when season comes in and you have to level your character up, you know, you start the whole game again. You want to just play it from the start to the end and level up as fast as you can. Not to, you know, go for, hey, I'm going to go to this area and I'm going to explore it and do it again and again until I reach, you know, the, the top, like the top ladder or something. That obviously is part of seasons, you know, you have to be on the top. But as Ziggy said, right, I definitely agree that if there are some exploits in the game where people are doing some nasty things, some people are kind of, they say that, hey, I was forced to do this because this guy was doing this and I'm competitive, I want to catch up. And the other people are like, you know, uh, I don't want to do this. And if that's the way to go on top of the ladder, boat, ladder sorry, then uh, I'm not going to try it at all. But I think there's a second point to it as well, Ziggy. I don't know what your opinions are. It's the legendaries, right? So for me, I'm not a seasons guy. I didn't, you know, it's not the biggest part of me. I like to make builds and all. So for me, I was looking forward to some new legendaries that were being added into the game, right? Now, each class had one or two, but uh, I wasn't really... Personally, I was really impressed by them. You know, they weren't anything game change or even game altering. As yeah. in, you use them and you can try a different build. To me, they were like, okay, it has a cool ability for the first five seconds, and then I'm bored already. So, what do you think about that? Was that another reason why seasons were, like, you know, maybe they were not where they should have been? Is the legendaries, you know, they were not exciting enough. I kind of, I usually take the stance that I'm not really fussed on the rewards for these sorts of things. Like if they if they put like a, a race in the game or something like that, or a, uh-huh. a season in the game, it's more for me about it, about the actual experience of it. But I do think from you know reading the community's reactions that overall the legendaries were not really um, and much of a motivator because there's definitely a big section of the community that is motivated by these rewards and maybe something like an interesting new set that uh, you know enabled a new type of endgame uh, Torment 6 build would have been a big motivator. Yeah. Uh, undeniably, that would have gotten a lot more people playing Seasons. So I do I do think that was there. Uh, for me, it wasn't really a big deal because, as I said, I don't really, uh-huh. I don't really kind of... The motivation makes almost no difference in terms of whether I play a Season or not, those okay. extra items that you obtain. It, to, me, to me, it's more about the actual experience of the Season itself. Uh-huh. So uh, I'm talking, I'm talking like that competitive leveling experience, which just for the record, they have uh, improved a lot of those things that were problems back then. So hopefully, season two is going to be better and more competitive. Looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. But uh, also, uh, new game mechanics that change the way the season plays out. This is something that hasn't been, wasn't really done in uh, Diablo two, and yeah, Diablo two did well with its seasons yeah. without needing that. But that was a long time ago, and I do think that now maybe seasons could incorporate some bigger mechanics changes, something that changed the gameplay at a more fundamental level and, uh-huh. uh, you know, made it a bit more interesting and different and epic to play. Something different to the core game experience. All right. So basically, like, a yeah, different event or something. Anything that could take your mind off the mundane thing, as in if a season comes in, it's something like a, a thing to celebrate, right? It's something to get excited about rather than, hey, you know, season's coming, I'm going to get half of my friends list, you know, pushed into that side and it's going to mean that less people are going to play Diablo. I think for me, that's what, you know, I I saw happening in season one. And as Mr. Ziggy said, right, the first part of him, he does not care about rewards. That's one part of the community. The other part of the community, which is guys like me who want to see a reward as in something that changes your gameplay, that didn't happen. So basically the both spectrum, if you will, were, you know, not getting what they wanted. And season one, even though it was an amazing thing, because you have to understand, you know, it's something that they, it's the first time they introduced to Diablo 3. 
even though it was like a good thing to add, but it wasn't there. So season one came and went. I got my character to like uh, 70 and then I got, I think, at another 40 Paragon levels. I found my Vengeful Wind, the, the fist weapon for Monk, and I'm like, okay, it's GG time for me. And I just sat out of the season. But that being said, I have seen like in my friend list, in my clan, I've seen so many people playing the game. Um, you know, being yeah. part of the season. I think, I think overall seasons are uh, an improvement to the game. It's great that they were added overall. Mm -hmm. I think something Wyatt Chang said in the interview I had with him was that uh -huh. uh, rifts are an opportunity for them to try new things and without it uh, affecting the core game, without it being impactful for the core game. I would like to see them take that same mindset that they already have towards rifts, mm -hmm. expand upon it, not only in rifts. I, I, firstly, I'd like to see them do more crazy things in rifts, mm -hmm. but also in seasons. Seasons are an opportune testing ground for them to try uh, core game changes like yeah. change uh, and add extra things to the game in, within the season and then they can remove it if it doesn't work well in the core game they don't have to roll it into the core game or if it does work well it's a chance to roll a feature over into the core game yeah sounds pretty amazing it'll make something that you really want to again you know making season celebrative you know you want to play it because it's the, the cool thing to do right so if they do some exclusive rewards to season that's pretty good as well and as you said they have taken steps towards it you know they, they're doing it but I think Season one to me was like a test phase. They get, hey, let's give it a go, see how it, you know, how people, how community like it or not, and then we'll take it from there. So season one for me was good. It's a good addition, but you know, you know, a lot could have, you know, be done. But that being said, season two is coming out, and uh, that that should be pretty, pretty amazing. So, any thoughts on that, Ziggy? Because you did see like the whole BlizzCon, and they did talk about season two there. Anything that you're excited about for season two because it will be coming pretty soon. Yeah, I think the best thing for Season 2 is that they are kind of redesigning the, I guess, the idea behind Conquest mm -hmm. and moving them away even further from, like, leveling and things like that and moving them more towards kind of extra game challenges that uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't normally be doing. So, for example, the um, one of the new Conquests I talked with Wyatt about was the getting 50 million gold streak. Uh -huh. That takes concerted effort and planning to do something like that. It's not something you're just going to do accidentally, like yeah. getting a level, like... It's, it's not just something you would be doing anyway, getting more Paragon levels. So they said from the beginning they didn't want to do that, but they still kind of had conquests that centered around the core gameplay that is Diablo and what people were already doing outside of Seasons. Mm -hmm. But this is stuff that's extra things people can try and do in Seasons. And it's also things that people can just gear for and plan for and then do, and then they don't do it anymore. It's not like a not a repeated thing. I, I like this. Uh -huh. So I like this sort of the addition of these conquests. So... Definitely. I think this is a good direction for uh, future seasons to continue trying to mm -hmm. uh, add extra things like this. And in the future, I'd like to see them take it even further and uh, add gameplay elements that tie in with the new conquest. So let's. what, what about a new season three comes out and uh -huh. they say there's five new conquests in season three and each of those new conquests actually has like a new map or event or something tied with it. That, uh, obviously, uh -huh. that's a bit of extra design work for them, but I think the game warrants it. I think the game deserves it. Yeah. Right, and now we're thinking, hey, the extra like level design or something, or ex something that's something too like uh, I don't know, strange, like adding a new level. Earlier, a year, half a year ago, would be like, now nah, Blitz is never going to do that. But now we actually see Ruins of Sesheron is a great example yeah. that they are willing to yeah. add more content, and it's kind and of and that's amazing. completely new content too. I asked yeah, yeah. White if that was something like left over from development. He said that was designed from scratch, from the ground up. So wow, if they're willing yeah. to design a completely new zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you know that was not going to be in the game either way. Yeah. Then uh, I think they would could potentially be willing to do that to make seasons a little bit more interesting as well. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And one last thing though, what do you think about the duration of the season? Like people have been arguing over this over the forums for quite a long time. They ask me like, what do you think is a fair length for the season? So since you've played Path of Exile, a game that plays in in most parts like it's the same kind of loot find game and uh, monster crushing game, sim pretty much similar ideas. How long do you think a season should be? Like a race to the Top, if you will how long it's a you... it's a very difficult thing to answer because mm -hmm. even path of exile struggling with that quite a bit as well they yeah. um, had four month seasons and people complained that the last month of the season was dead so they reduced it to three month seasons and the last month of the season was dead i think this is um okay. something where no matter what length you put in unless mm -hmm. you just get like stupidly small no matter what length you put in, people are going to... There's going to be a lull time. It's going to be too long for someone. It's going to be yeah. the last section, whatever. Whatever month minus one will mm -hmm. be uh, a dead period for the game. So, uh, I don't know. I do feel like these are probably too long. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if I'm just falling into that trap, though. But, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do think maybe a little bit too long. Yeah. Especially given that there wasn't enough 
late game changes in the season to exactly. uh, make it significantly different to the core game mm-hmm. for with it being that long. Yeah. yeah. And especially with how short the, the initial game, like the leveling period and everything was, Basically, with everyone yeah. kind of exploiting and that. And with, just with the game itself being quite quick to level, that mm-hmm. uh, initial couple excitement of the first few days and gearing up happens very, very quickly. So maybe making them shorter yes. uh, in line with that would be a good idea. See, that's what I saw too, right? Like, a, a first day, the first few, like 12, 12, 13 hours of the season, everyone's rushing. And it's really, you see the chat, because the way I judge if something's successful, I've always seen that in Diablo, is to look at the game chat. That's my little secret, guys, you know? I would open up the general chat of the window and I'll see how often people are interacting. Something weird I like to do. But since we have clans now, you know, I was looking at, everyone was online, 150 slots in a clan. I think 130 people were roughly online that day. And for the first 12 hours, it was a frenzy, and it was a good kind of frenzy. Everyone's talking to each other, everyone's making fun of each other. Hey, look what I found, you didn't find this. They're all racing to 70, <laughs> and uh, they, you know, you see them slowly pushing out. But, you know, in the next week or so, some someone's like Paragon 100 or Paragon 200, and uh, the other guy basically found better loot in that time, you know, uh, whatever span of the time. So what happens is the people, the person who's at Paragon 200 would maybe get bored. Hey, I'm not getting enough rewards or something. I don't think I want to play seasons anymore because I have a non-seasonal character which is just sitting out and doing, you know, doing nothing. Whereas the other guy, you know, since he got good loot, he jumps up even further in Paragon levels. And that might have demotivated some people. Now, I know there's no solution to it because, as I said, season can offer whatever you want from it. It's a way to start new. You can have the, the same leveling up experience again with the community. You can even find your loot again. And you can even be, if you want to be like Mr. Ziggy, aspire for the best in the top of the leaderboard so what i saw basically at the end of the month of the season was i had a couple of my friends in the clan who were paragon 600 i'm not joking guys you know that's how much they were in seasons and then there were other people who were paragon 200 who had just stopped playing the season because you know um they didn't like it but for, for the most part almost everyone in the clan participated in season for a guy like me i was like no i don't want to play seasons because there's nothing for me to find even i leveled up to 70 and played to a paragon 40 which is not a lot of time but if you think about it 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 fulfilled the purpose that i was looking after i was after a legendary for a monk and that's what i wanted to try and i got to try that so seasons do offer something for everyone but i think that's where to me the balance should be and it's so tricky right because we're just talking about the change and we're not game developers but as, as Ziggy said, the time span, people would find that, hey, four months is too long, three months is too long. But on the other flip side of things, Blizzard also has to design new content for a season because they can make seasons one month long or 15 days, for instance. But season three, yeah. for instance, won't be yeah. any different from season four. It's just going to be like, hey, OK, the season's over. By the way, we've got another season coming up. What's in the new season? Nothing at all, really. So they need that time to develop new things. And that's really kind of tricky because... You know, a developmental stage, I understand a bit of programming myself. It's not the easiest thing to do. So a tricky question, I understand. To me, if I want to give a random number, maybe two months, three months, I'd say three months. Yeah, let's go with a number is OK for me. But then again, that's just me being me. So hard question to answer. But here we kind of answered it anyway. So there is that. <laughs> yeah, I think with the current implementation of seasons, uh, where the core gameplay doesn't change too much, uh, shorter is better. But if they um, if they want to develop some more interesting gameplay changes and uh, new mechanics and stuff at the seasons, then having longer seasons, like four month season plus, mm-hmm. would um, not be not be too big a deal because that would give them extra development cycle time exactly. to work on the next season's content. Mm-hmm. And uh, it would also be different from the core game, and people would be more interested in playing it for longer. So, uh, yeah, I think I think it could be longer if they do start to implement some different things. Nice. So speaking of new changes, it's been a while since we last ch- chatted about this, but uh, I'm wondering what are your opinions on rifts and greater rifts and these kind of features in the game, right? Like to me, they're the coolest thing ever. And whilst everyone was doing seasons and doing the same thing there, I was doing greater rifts and rifts. What do you think about this, this cool idea of rifts, right? Because that's something we have always asked for and they finally delivered it. And I think it's just so much more fun, you know, than normally going to, you know, act one, going to Festering Woods and farming there. Now you actually have a place where you can go with your friends and not only can you, you know, just uh, speed clear it and see the kind of loot you get, but you can also compete with other people on leaderboards. So what do you think about that, Ziggy? That's uh, another cool thing, right? Obviously, Adventure Mode overall was a monumental improvement to the experience of farming in Diablo 3. And it it added something that I always think is a really big deal is uh, an opportunity to see all of the awesome content the developers have made. I hate when you have this awesome boss in Act 1, but there's no point ever farming it again. Uh-huh. So this brings this brings that back. 
But uh, I think greater is probably the the more important topic now because mm -hmm. what they add to the game is something the game didn't previously had, and that is challenge. Like yeah. let's let's face it, Diablo three is not a difficult game. It's not a, it's not a challenging game mm -hmm. with the ability to set your own difficulty and with level scaling now especially. Uh, the game is, uh, is is very easy to play at a very comfortable difficulty, and you know just gear up efficiently through that. It's it's uh, it's it's fun to play, but it's not difficult. But what Greater Rifts add is uh, a scaling challenge. It adds back that sort of old old school scalings challenge, mm -hmm. and uh, it also adds a kind of a, a layer of competition on top of that. So I think that's exactly what the game needed, and I'd like to see them expand upon that idea even further. This is something I tried to probe Wyatt for as well, was uh -huh. whether they whether they plan on adding more challenges, and you said that that is something they're looking into, is uh, other ways to expand and add challenge to the game. Because I think now Diablo 3 is a, a very good game at the fundamental level. It's exceptionally fun to play. I think the loot system overall is pretty solid now, yeah. and uh, I think the loot hunt is very satisfying now. But that's the only that's the biggest thing that is missing from the game for me right now, and the reason I don't play endlessly. I keep coming back to the game because the game's at, a, at its core is so good. Uh -huh. But because it misses, it's because it's missing overall that kind of like challenge. Uh, that's what you know what doesn't keep me around. So greater rifts were a great increase, a great improvement to that because you. Although you could do Torment 6 just fine, mm -hmm. and you can set your difficulty, or you could do Torment 4 because that's where you can farm out efficiently. When it comes to Greater Rifts, you every time you get further in a Greater Rift, it gets more difficult, and it gets more difficult, mm -hmm. and to the point where you have to start playing really well, you have to start using your skills correctly. You have to actually be good at your car character. You have to actually be good at using your skills. Not only, and not only do you have to have good gear, you have to uh, have well put together and intelligently designed gear set yeah. and then also intelligent use of those skills and I think that's a fantastic thing for the game overall but it is mm -hmm. under, underutilized right now I think it's something uh -huh. an idea that they would need to expand upon in the future mm -hmm. I think I might have a little like thing to add on to that mate is definitely yeah it's the greater rift is basically your your new uh, testing battleground right if you think you're good enough for the game earlier diablo used to be for me was a game you'd lie back on the your couch if you were on a console you'd play with your controller or even you know lie back on your chair and enjoy have a chat with your friend play the game and it'll be fun right it'll be like a uh, like a so-called social experience you can still do that but now you can be the sweaty tryhard you've always wanted to be you know by playing greater rifts that's what i call it so it's a great addition to the game with with that regard but like since i think one thing is as Ziggy said it's a great addition there's a lot to be desired and i think partly for me the problem was and i think most people did feel it now everyone has a favorite class you know you play this i play that uh I think all classes were not so equal on, on the same footing when it came to the Greater Rifts. And again, that's season one, that's where things started. And partly why season one did it, it did whatever it wanted to do, and partly because, you know, Greater Rifts need an improvement. To me, I, it's not the whole reason, but I do think that the way the classes played in, in seasons uh, and Greater Rifts was a big, big, like the big underlying factor. Because if you're a demon hunter, for instance, uh, you could uh, go up to the highest level of Greater Rifts. You can even go up to 50. Same thing for a Barbarian later on. But if you're a, a, like a humble monk like myself, Greater Rift 32 was a place you would sit on and uh, that's where you know things would get nasty for you. So any thoughts on that, Ziggy? Because you know you played Demon Hunter from way back in the days. You were the first guy who knew how Demon Hunter was played. You know, the kiting aspect of the game. You would shoot, you would vault away, you would fire a cluster arrow. And when I watch your streams, basically you're still doing that because you have the the old, you know, the, the skills in a way. But now Demon Hunters were in season where did you drop your sentry, you look at your watch, you make a sandwich, and you're still shooting and things are dying <laughs> on the screen. Which is awesome, don't get me wrong. Killing monsters is always amazing, but um, that did bring up a big problem and that was hey this class is farming well that's okay because it's supposed to perform that way but why can't the other class compete so class balance is what basically i'm getting onto right now and uh, what do you think about that uh, going so from i think that um previously in the game class balance was a non-issue and there was no nothing really highlighting it all that much because everyone could do torment six mm -hmm. with you know with the end game set everyone could do torment six just fine mm -hmm. but uh greater rifts obviously create a competitive sort of environment and also create a uh, a quantitative sort of measurement of your character so you know my character can reach greater rift 40 uh -huh. whereas your character can only reach greater rift 30 and it's like obviously my character is better than yours yeah. so that adding up into the game makes in people's mind again class balance an issue so uh -huh. i guess there's nothing really else to say about that they it's uh -huh. it's probably to the desire of the community to improve class balance i don't really have 
exactly much right. personal feelings on class balance. I like it's to a vicious well, circle, I don't generally it? compete class versus class. Like mm-hmm. I um I don't like I don't look at my demon hunter and say it's not as good as a barb. I just go, how's my demon hunter compared to other demon hunters? Or and how is well fun, am I yeah. going compared to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, yeah, I agree. It's a vicious circle because the more you add into the game, the more problem, the new problems arise, and then you have to figure them out. But all in all, you know, season one to me was something good. The whole Greater Rift part was amazing. I enjoyed the challenge. But then, you know, the whole season two is being announced. And the other thing, which I think we kind of should move on to now, would be because I did see you like sneakily logging into uh, the PTR. So you have given it a little swing, haven't you? You've given it a, a go. And PTR is yeah, patch two point one two. I've put in, put in quite a few hours to the PTR now. Um, I, I would kind of like to start off with, I guess, the um, uh-huh. the rift change. Since we're talking about rifts, yes, yeah, uh, there's the some rift changes that are pretty important on the PTR right now. Uh, they mm-hmm. kind of went over these at BlizzCon, but now we've had a chance to actually test them out. Yeah. Density changes, changes to pylons, uh, and layout changes are probably the the biggest thing. Although I think they rebalanced Rift Guardians as well, but didn't really kind of take too much notice of that because uh-huh. I was too busy with the new Marauders set stomping the Rift Guardians before <laughs> they did anything. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the first one was density, the density changes. Ha- have you uh, had a chance to play around on the PTR? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. I played a lot with my monk. Like, I was smiling from ear to ear when I logged into PTR, and uh, I had a build in mind. This is me being a horrible person, thinking, hey, guys, I told you so, but I did come up with a build, and I had an idea. Made a video a few days ago, before the patch came by, that, guys, this is going to be the thing for monks in, in patch 2.12. I tried it out, and it was true, so... Yeah, I've been awesome. enjoying Great Rift, right. but uh, yeah, yeah, I understand so the density. density was the first big change. Did you mm-hmm. notice much density improvement on the uh, Oh, on absolutely, the right? Now, I've seen a video. I don't know if you've seen it, mate. It was a nice guy on Reddit posted it, and he had like a song, I'll walk a thousand miles and I'll do that. Basically, the video was a guy walking from point A to point B after dying. The map was long, and he was telling that there were no monsters in the rift at all. That used to be the greater rift, right? I used to call it the rule of three back in the days where some rift would be dense and they'd have good monsters. You might even get act one zombies and you'll be a happy man because you'll easily clear it. And the other side of it would be that you would get rule of three, which is you find packs of three monsters scattered around the rift and that's all you would get and you'll be wasting <laughs> time. But now density, wow, you know, it reminds me of what was the patch? 1.0.7 was it when you were farming act one back in the days? The density is amazing, right? You you find so many monsters to kill. And the game to me has always been, you know, you kill more monsters, it becomes more fun. And uh, yeah, I logged into PTR. I, I, I started a Greater Rift and uh, my monk jumped to Greater Rift 37 instantly because partly because the character was balanced. But more importantly, the density was so good that I didn't have to pray to the RNG gods to, hey, give me a good Rift. The monsters are equally balanced. You might get a nasty lot in the beginning, but the whole span of the rift, it's pretty good. There, there are lots of them there, and they're kind of all different types of monsters, all you know, put into one big rift. And I've felt consistency. That's something that was lacking in greater rifts. So definitely, mm. yeah. Density. Okay. Rift. So I think the biggest point for me on the density is that the consistency consistency is improved. I'm kind of surprised about how much the density is increased, and this seems kind of counter to some of their design decisions earlier, mm-hmm. which was to make less mobs but more challenging mobs. Yeah. So I feel like maybe they've gone a little bit overboard potentially people are going to hate me for that because people love more density people want to see rooms packed full of monsters but <laughs> it kind of that takes away a lot of your interesting decision making and gameplay and tactical combat from mm-hmm. Diablo which is like one of the biggest things about Reaper of Souls for me and Patch 2.0 was uh, that t- combat became much more tactical so uh-huh. um, I don't know maybe they've gone a little bit overboard on the density but the consistency yeah. is de- undeniably way better and that was the most important thing uh-huh. I think the competition on Greater Rifts should come from uh, the challenge, uh, RNG should be in the form of uh, the difficulty of mobs and affixes that they spawn with rather mm-hmm. than whether you get a rift that doesn't have any That's such a great armor. point. That is such a big point, right? Because earlier, if you had the same gear, mate, uh, you basically, again, had to play to pray to the RNG gods to get a good rift because finishing a greater rift 40 and finishing a greater rift 45, maybe your character can do 45, but if you get something like those act four monsters with mallets and all and they had the 75 percent shield uh, blocking or something you know good luck to you it's not going to happen so it was all rng based to me earlier but now it's just so good that everyone has a fighting chance you know rng is still mm. there the monsters will be mixed in and it'll be jumbled in you might get a nasty lot in the beginning or somewhere in the middle but overall it's good and the other thing i should i should ask you now is mate, about the pylon so earlier maybe you'll get a pylon maybe you'll get none at all maybe there'll be seven rift until you get a pylon but now, what do you think about pylons in PTR? 
Yeah, I'm really happy with this change overall because obviously before it was, you know, conduit pylon or bust, basically. It was, <laughs> that was pretty much it. But now um, speed pylons, uh, shield pylons are pretty good, but I think speed pylons are, like, my favorite now. Oh, yeah. They're so, they're so good, the speed <laughs> and the duration of them and knocking yeah. monsters back and mm-hmm. the fact that you can break walls as well. Pretty they can come up often, but when you do have that wall attack with the speed pylon, it's so satisfying just walking straight through them. So <laughs> I think speed pylons is, like, yeah, I, overall, I, I love the pylon changes. Mm-hmm. I think the design mentality behind this as well, when the entire community was saying, nerf conduit pylons, nerf conduit pylons, <laughs> just remove pylons from greater rifts in general. Wow, you guys are boring. Why are you asking for that? Yeah. I, I'm really happy that the G, uh, PoE devs... What? Whoa, well, PoE devs? Wow. Whoa, whoa, Too whoa. much part of the big podcasting. <laughs> wow. That's the Blizzard right. devs were just like... <laughs> we're just like no let's we're let's make them all good let's yeah. make them all fun and that's i think that's awesome so yeah. i'm happy that made it through yeah definitely right and i think so it's been good. done pretty well i've spent like so much time i don't even know when you start a pti and you find a speed pile on i don't i don't even like conduit anymore i just run through people as a monk put serenity on and i just knock them around it doesn't do damage but hey it, it just basically is me being sadistic i'm like you made me suffer all that time back in the patch i would die because you'd surround me and now i can push you away but yeah pylons are good but the other thing i've also seen is um is a number of pylons you encounter i think for me and again this is just a random number i'm generating but it's always almost always consistent in every rift to me i call it like roughly around three to four in every rift that's how many pylons you will encounter before you meet the final rift guardian and that's pretty good yeah to me, you know they tightened the ranges on those they did i think they said it was uh you should encounter two to four pilots now yeah. compared to zero to six was the range before much wider and oh. the potential for none as well so you're always going to get i think it's a guaranteed two now and maximum of four so much more much more consistent oh nice okay that's good um i think we should talk about another biggie that i have been holding on back so we've talked about greater rifts and you know what the how the gameplay is and all um I want to add something that you get in Greater Rifts when you kill the Guardian, and those are the legendary items, right? Uh, and not just any legendary, mate, the ancient items. Have you had a chance to look at those beauties, by the way? So, the an- the topic of ancient items. Oh, uh-huh. man. Okay, <laughs> so ancient items are a Band-Aid fix. Now, that's not a bad thing. Ba- mm-hmm. Whenever you say the word Band-Aid, people are like, wow, that's the worst thing in the world. Like, a Band-Aid fix on a game. It's just a Band-Aid fix. Uh-huh. Uh, that sounds like, you know, such a negative thing. But Band-Aids are good, guys. Band-Aids stop you from bleeding out the death. <laughs> So yeah. the the ancient legendary edition is quite obvious. It's quite simple. It's it's a very very simple uh, addition of an extra tier of loot to go for, and it just gives people something to do until something else happens in the game. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad thing at all. I think uh-huh. it's a good thing, and I think it was a good idea that they added these ancient legendaries. Now, obviously, you're going to be pretty pissed if you got that zero point zero one percent drop legendary that you needed, <laughs> and now it was especially if it was a weapon. And now uh, yeah. any ancient legendary weapon is basically better than that particular weapon. I mean, that sucks, but yeah. you have new stuff to farm for. And exactly. after all, that's pretty much all we have in Diablo mm-hmm. is that farming for that loot. Uh-huh. So I think I think it's fine. Uh, they maybe could have done something a little bit more interesting than just making stats 30% stronger. Uh-huh. Um, but... Like maybe added an extra effect or added some extra kind of interesting RNG on there where oh. one stat was much stronger and then the other ones were still the same. So maybe oh. ancient legendaries had their their thing was that they had one superb stat. Like and then maybe that would add kind of like an in- an interesting sort of extra collection point to it. But you know, mm-hmm. as it is now, it's it's a it's a nice little band aid to give us something extra to do. Definitely I do think they should right. change the boxes of them though. Like when you looking at them in your inventory, uh-huh. you can't tell the ancient until you mouse over them. That's no, annoying. you really can't. And some of them, I think they're bugged right now as well. You can't even like they are uh, ancient ones, and you can't tell that they're mm, ancient. crafting ones. Yeah, I the think crafting they're crafting ones. And even their, uh, I think, rolls as well. So normally ancients are up to, I think, they give you 250 of the max, like, roll that you can have. For instance, your gloves would have 750 main stat as the highest, but now they can go up to 1,000, right? But uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's the way it is. But the the craftable ones, uh, I was crafting Captain Crimson set, and the highest they can go for is 650, I think. And uh, every single craftable uh a craftable legendary is actually an ancient item that's another bug yeah. from what i've seen so that's yeah. guys if you haven't abused it yet go for it because it's only ptr so i've crafted my cap of crimson but to get back on the point right of ancient item they are definitely a band-aid fix but it's something you know 
every time when you play the game, the game at the core of it is a, is a farming game, right? It's the loot game. It's the loot game that designed the, designed the whole, you know, system of, you know, you going RNG-based items to find in the game. I mean, Diablo is what made this, and you still have it in the game. So for if you're a guy who's like me, who spent thousands of hours into the game and your character is maxed out, then there's another way for you to, you know, move forward, and it's pretty good. So your other items are good, but it's your weapons as well is something that you really, really want to farm because... That again, if you're after leaderboards, if you're after something like that, uh, they did give us an example. I will give you an example right now. So if you have the best Maximus, for instance, right now in your hand, it's doing something like 3700% um, weapon, 3750, for instance, damage to you uh, in your hand. And it's all good. You've got a Ramalandi's gift in it, and it's really shiny and nice and all. But if you get an ancient item, this number could be 30% better. So imagine that your weapon damage, your skills are hitting 30% harder. So for a guy who's after the laurels of the leaderboard, that's something you really want. And then you can imagine these stats being added on to all single item slots of your, the 13 items that you wear. And you get more of your main stat and more of vitality. Not only do you become tankier, you become, you know, you do more damage. And isn't that everything about guys? Well, it shouldn't be. But, you know, we, we love big numbers and damage is on screen. So it's a, definitely a band-aid fix. I agree with that. And it's also kind of indicating how the, the stat numbers will progress in the future. Because, you know, the next uh, so-called expansion, which I'm not going to talk about right now, you know, you can see how the, the numbers are progressing and how... The damage will scale but yeah definitely a cool thing to uh, look for if you have completely maxed out character right now so everyone has now, to play to devil's ad advocate on that a bit uh -huh. um the uh, on the other hand i kind of do think that uh just making higher numbers is uh you know potentially a negative thing for the game like just having kind of like you know constantly growing numbers and i mean okay. we see that whenever the, like the level cap is raised all your previous gear becomes useless mm -hmm. and uh that's so that sort of thing can be a little bit sad so i can i can definitely uh, understand if anyone has any kind of negative feelings towards ancient legendaries because essentially they do just you know increase mm -hmm. numbers by 30 percent yeah however in the current game i guess to counter my own counterpoint mm -hmm. uh in the current game we have a greater rift system which is kind of like this you know infinitely scaling system that gets more and more difficult yeah. and although uh torment 6 only goes to a certain certain point and then that's it stops that's as maximum difficulty it reaches mm -hmm. uh the the game extends beyond that so the ancient legendaries are kind of like this uh this like extra game uh thing like this beyond the core game and it's basically just to get higher in those greater rifts that's like i think the the only purpose of them because obviously with all non-ancient uh legendaries of your you know your end game set you can easily do torment 6 so you can easily do everything in the core game without any ancient legendaries. Absolutely. The ancient legendaries are more just a way to scale for into greater rifts and to provide some extra competition and things to go for for that. Yeah, basically to keep the leaderboards moving, you know, it's something that, hey, if I'm on the top, I have to be careful because my friend Ziggy, if I log in for I log out for one day, you know, he's going to beat me by doing that. So, yeah, it's I think it's just giving the game a little bit more of a... A breath of fresh air it's giving it that little extra time you know for people to keep playing it keep enjoying it more until the next big thing comes into the game mm. i do think a better way of doing it is to uh -huh. do what they're doing a little bit already and add different items and add different build oh, yeah. items like they have announced and i guess this kind of transitions into the next time mm -hmm. so the demon hunter set they added was unhallowed essence which um has three different set bonuses with it like the rest of them uh, your generators do generate two additional discipline mm -hmm. oh they generate two discipline uh, the four set bonus is you gain 40% damage reduction uh, if an enemy is like close to you within 20 yards of you. And then the six set bonus is your generators and multi-shot deal 10% increased damage for every point of discipline you have. Ooh. So this is something like 400% uh, extra damage on your multi-shot potentially with max discipline. And it's pretty easy to increase your max discipline a little bit more as well. Definitely. So um, this, this is something they're starting to do a bit of. And I think this sort of addition is way more interesting than Ancient Legendaries, adding... Mm -hmm. Uh, alternative builds. The thing is, from a development perspective, I can certainly understand that this takes a lot more time and money to develop something yeah. like this than it takes to develop Ancient Legendaries, which is basically just scaling <laughs> up the stats by 30%. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to say, though, I guess, um, obviously, the transitioning point was this is a more interesting way of increasing and uh, lengthening the loot hunt in Diablo, and I would like to see this mm -hmm. happen a bit more because uh it's yeah. it gives us extra things to hunt for yeah. it, it is it doesn't make the rest of our gear useless mm -hmm. uh, it just gives us alternative builds to play so i would definitely like to see more of that yeah. do you have any thoughts on that 
Definitely, right? Uh, now, this is something I've been thinking. I can't add much uh, about my favorite class, but I have been playing, you know, the PTR, and uh, I've been seeing this uh, thing, right? To me, it's always been the builds. Like, again, I'm biased on this one, as you know that, guys. To me, uh, the way, the reason why I play Diablo is the build diversity, the things you can do by tweaking those little six skills you have and something magical happens on the screen and you feel like you've done something cool because hey, the character that couldn't kill this monster on this difficulty can now basically obliterate him. And there are two ways you can do that. First obviously is the build, but the most importantly, which you know, Diablo being a loot based game, you finding items is the loot you find. So the loot has to be more appealing to you, you know? It has to be appealing, not because it looks nice or because it has a good effect, but it should also feel fun when you're playing with it, right? And that's something they've also added, right? They're adding new sets for each class. As Demon Hunter, you know, Ziggy talked about the Demon Hunter set. Actually, a set on multi-shot. I'm going to talk to you about that, by the way, because I'm sure you've got a secret build for us in your mind working already, you know, how you can use multi-shot to do cool <laughs> things. So for me, like the class that I play now, Monk, I've seen the new Monkey King set that was redesigned, and I absolutely loved it, right? Now, that's an existing change, but change in a way that's improving the quality of the game, and it's, it's making the whole experience more fun. Earlier, you would spam your skill. I don't know if you've seen it, my friend, Ziggy. It's it's basically you use uh, Flying Dragon Diablo and you attack very, very fast. You generate lots of spirit and you mash your buttons like the CM Wizard of the good old days and you break your fingers, but you deal a lot of damage. That That's how monks used to play in season one. But now they've changed this, uh, the whole set and they've added you know effects to it in a way that whenever you cast a, a spirit spender, you can summon a clone that deals damage and uh, the next damage that you will deal from the spirit spender if it's been taunted by the clone that you summon will take more damage so it's basically all about the, the spenders the, the amount of spirits you expend not on base of how fast you can press a button but how you know well you play the game and how well you're using the skill so slowing the pace down but actually making the gameplay more interesting again it's not just about the bigger numbers but it's about the interaction so all of that i think i have seen it so far and the new legendaries they need to be constantly added into the game like the way they are being added right now to make the game you know more appealing because mm. i definitely yeah. agree right that's why i agree that it's ancient item even though i'm kind of excited about them to me that's not the only thing and i'm waiting for the monk the new monk set to be added in the game and i'm really curious about what it's going to be but to give an example on the other character that i've tried is the the wizard set the archon set where the slow time bubble basically does some cool things you cast it on an enemy, they take more damage, you throw something in the bubble and it does even more damage. Such a cool idea, right? That set you can integrate with or your already Vir sets to do amazing things. So gameplay changes like that, right? Which makes you use a different set and you can still keep your existing set and it gives you options, diversity, I think. That's the spice of life for Diablo and it's always been the case back in the days and we were lacking that, I'll be very honest with you. When Reaper of Souls came by, all the builds I was not really a big fan of i didn't enjoy them but really now i'm playing the patch and i'm seeing how the new sets are being added and the current sets that are being tweaked into the game i'm really excited about the game again you know it's so much more fun that you can you can not only do cool things but you can do cool things that are actually you know, effective as well so i'm really really happy about that mate it's the sets are definitely changing legendaries is a way to go forward have you found yeah, this is yeah. this is I think the biggest and most exciting thing for the game that they are adding these things and that they're not a part of an expansion pack that they're just starting to add. They just recognise the need for mm -hmm. and are starting to value adding more interesting build defining items. And this means that so firstly, I guess there's two changes here that get me really excited about the game again. Mm -hmm. Is um, Demon Hunter end game changing? So changing the Marauder set and how it plays to make it more active is fantastic. That's like one of the biggest things that kind of you know killed the game experience for me was that my end game set for my favorite character was a very passive playstyle. Played like <laughs> a witch doctor. I, I don't like playing witch doctor. I want to play Demon Hunter. Yeah, if you <laughs> so want to change, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then adding uh, all further alternatives as well that should hopefully be Torment 6 viable and then some uh, are, is a very exciting concept for me so I, I'm, it's probably this is like the biggest and most exciting thing for the game I think change wise mm -hmm. is that they are looking to add these extra essentially they're adding extra builds to the game they're not actually adding yeah. extra items they're adding okay. extra builds to the game and mm -hmm. that's exciting definitely I mean to me that's what adds diversity that's what makes you come back hey I've got this set now maybe I want to try this out and see how the gameplay is so yeah it gives it adds time to the game it's something that you actually want to invest your time in and you know enjoy the whole experience so definitely right new sets and even new legendaries right that's the way to go forward um, and yeah but just a little side thing that I think we have missed and I think it's gonna be your favorite thing too 
sometimes the changes are big, right? As we've talked about, we've discussed so many of them already in a great array of changes, the way the classes are being rebalanced and the way sets are acting. But little things like the little scuttling creatures you see running around here and there, they've also been doing something am amazing to it, right? I'm talking about treasure goblins, guys. They have <laughs> added some awesome things to them, right? There are three different kinds, and apparently there's a secret one as well. I don't know, he's called the... The there's actually goblin. there's actually five new goblins. Oh really? There's... Please do enlighten us because yeah, this is new okay. to me. Okay. <laughs> what are they? So they now? announced three at BlizzCon, which was the the um, blood shard goblin, the uh -huh. crafting material and plan goblin, and the gem goblin. So they showed off each of those. Okay. Uh, and they're all really cool. I especially love the blood shard goblin because uh -huh. they especially because they put the the lore in the background that he steals the blood shards of. Kadala, which Kadala get wrecked. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. there's also a Rainbow Goblin, which allows you to go to Whimsy Shire. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, I spoke to one of the devs about that, and they said that... Um, actually, it wasn't... It, I don't think it was one of the devs. It was someone managing the Blizzard Twitter. But um, they said that it was so that people would just happen across Whimsy Shire and their regular gameplay, because currently it's a piece of content that you only experience if you go well out of your way to experience it. Yeah. So they wanted to add that in as a, as a rare but random occurrence. So mm -hmm. you'll now randomly kind of find your way in Whimsy Shire. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is this kind of like little evil, evil little bugger that uh, teleports around and he drops like uh, extra loot. I can't remember what he's, can't remember what he's called... I think Malevolent's kind of like Goblin, or maybe I'm... Malevolent, that's yeah, the one. That's yeah, the I one, think right? it's Malevolent. I think yeah. you're right. And yeah, he's, a, he's another rare spawn, though I have seen people having rifts full of them, so it is possible. Oh, I and, saw uh, it. And those guys yeah. drop tons of extra loot. Just regular loot, but lots of it. Oh, wow. Okay. No, I saw a, a picture on Reddit, which was full of, like, the screen. Maybe they, no, they didn't cheat or anything. The whole screen was just full of stars and the green stars and the red stars, really. It was beautiful. They killed, like, a big pack of these guys. So yeah, I think they just have a higher chance to drop legendaries i don't know maybe it didn't happen for you but uh, still a pretty cool thing huh so five different goblins that is that is pretty amazing yeah i mean it's 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 a neat idea they said it was because the goblins themselves were boring and no one cares about them and that that was true that was uh -huh. the goblins before were boring they were barely worth killing so uh -huh. um yeah no it's it's good to make that little part of the game interesting not a big uh -huh. thing but just a nice little improvement i think awesome and obviously we've had the goblin realm which i bet you've been to a couple of times to kill the big goblin guardian have you been to yeah, her? Yeah, pretty hilarious. The design oh, of her is... That's the, the most favourite thing for me ever, right? The first time I saw the guy, like the, the sadist in me, when the guy died, I'll keep clicking the chest. Oh my god, that was... That's my like guilty pleasure, if you will. Like, you know, <laughs> go to the secret level, get all the gold, you know, get the loot, and then the guy's there. Oh wow, I'm weird. But anyways, the goblins are really fun, guys. I like That's, again, a little thing that you add to the game. And if you think about it, right... Even if you're, like, the way you can get blood shards is by doing a rift or a great array. But what if you're do, actually doing a bounty? You're doing normally ba bounty runs trying to get some uh, keystones going. You find goblins there as well, right? So they can also drop you some blood shards and other things. So mm. it's just, you know, they're, they're adding more interactable things to the game that you actually want to, you know, look out for. Same thing goes for the rainbow goblin, right? The, or that takes you to the pony land. Earlier, you wouldn't go there. Maybe you're still lacking, you're like me. You still don't have the Horadric hamburger or the spectrum you want that transmog really bad so how to go for it either you keep you know going to act one leave quit whatever the game or just basically play the game normally and if the guy comes you go there and you know it's just different things uh, that they're adding new things that they're adding that are kind of work pretty well with the you know the old system so that's that as well and the final thing i think we've got to cover in this we're pretty much done with the whole blizzcon uh, section here now is the legendary gems right they added some of that stuff back in the days but before we get into that i just have a starting question for you and that is what's your favorite gem what's the one you've been loving as a demon hunter have you been using it it's it's kind of it's kind of simple and not so exciting, but I love Bane of the Trapped. I love Cold the Week, and I love uh -huh. rocking Bane of the Trapped as uh, well, and uh, rocking the Polar Station Sentry Turrets uh -huh. with the new setup on PTR is just really really fun. Just like that, I love the idea of like uh, uh -huh. stacking damage bonuses. So I'm like I'm increasing. I have like high base damage, then I increase my base damage by this scaling, and then I also <laughs> make them take more damage, which is, increases it even further. I just I, I love yeah. that. I love one-shotting, like, packs mm -hmm. of elites and stuff, so Basically. that's my favorite. Not, not very exciting, but that's my no, favorite. No, 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 it works. But, like, I, I also, I'm, I'm kind of, like, I use Mirrone basically for the build that I had back in the days. You had to use it, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's, it's a pretty cool gem, Bane of the Trapped. Um, nice one. And they've also added new ones, right? So have you had a chance to find them in the PTR? I bet you have found a couple of them. 
No, I haven't found any of the new ones yet. Yeah? No. Ah, have you not? Okay, so I found one, like, uh, there's a couple of them. I think one is the non-physical damage, you know, re reduction, and the other one gives you life regen, and there's one for power leveling as well, right? That every monster you kill gives you extra experience, and that's kind of big as well, so... Like, again, little quality The core of that one is that it makes everything level one when you equip it into it. So you can oh. use what it... Wasn't that, isn't that how it works? I haven't had a chance Oh, to I don't it know. Yeah, that, that could be the case. I've, I think that's... I've heard level. that you can put it in an item and it'll make it level one so you can use your level 70 weapon to level with. Which, um, I thought, uh, there's, already, there's already a bunch of ways to, like, <laughs> use groups to power level you and stuff like that. So yeah. allowing solo people to power level themselves, I think, is it's a non-issue. So I, I, I have to come find to say things like that added to the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, cool. Yeah, so just, like, little quality changes. So I'm really excited about that, guys. I've been playing PTR, and so is my friend, mate, Ziggy, here. And, um, yeah, looking forward to the, the new, like, live version when it launches. And I hope I we get a monk set, you know. I'm crossing my fingers. So there we go. So all right. So uh, I think the final thing I kind of wanted to touch on briefly was mm -hmm. maybe just mention uh, how we feel about our classes. I mm -hmm. guess moving forwards. Oh is, yeah. Uh, it's is obviously if you play if you play a barb or something that we don't cover. I'm sorry, guys, but mm -hmm. I, I'm a demon hunter lover. I love my demon hunter. <laughs> so uh, we have, as I said, we have two awesome things. The Marauder set changes are fantastic, so good. People were really worried that it was going to be a nerf and that you wouldn't be able to, Demon Hunter wouldn't be competitive anymore. But as soon as I played on PTR without much effort put into, you know, refining the build, it was it was insane. I was just absolutely stomping. So mm -hmm. it's um, essentially what's happened to Demon Hunter now is that your sentries now fire your skills when you do. However, there's a lot of extra damage bonuses on top of that, so you, do, you now do a lot more damage when you do that. And uh, you can more quickly, thanks to this charge system, spam your um, turrets or your sentries down uh, very quickly, so you can get all three of your sentries down in one burst. Okay. And uh, that means that the Demon Hunter now plays like a Demon Hunter again. You're fast and snappy and bursty. Yeah. You've you got burst be much more there, mobile. Yeah. yeah, it's just cool. so much fun, so much more fun to play. So mm -hmm. really, really happy with that change overall. And I said that was one, that was one of the biggest things that kind of gets me really excited in the game again, just in playing the game again, because uh -huh. it makes my class, you know, just legit fun to play at end game again. <laughs> and then on top of that, they announced the new Unhallowed Essence set, which is the multi-shot set. Oh, yeah. And... Yeah. Uh, so come I'm on, very spill some secrets. This as well. Yeah, okay. So you asked, you mentioned before what would be my build idea for this. And yeah. uh, I, for me, this set just allows me to play as Donatas again. What, what I want to do is get my two ancient Donatas farmed up, get my Unhallowed Essence set, because the Unhallowed Essence set doesn't include any weapons. It's, hands, mm -hmm. it's all armor. So uh, you can equip that. You can even uh, take one item out and potentially... I think you can potentially... I don't know if you can incorporate the Marauder set, but you can definitely uh, incorporate something like your Cinder Code or something like that in All there right. and use the Fire Multi-Shot. But the biggest thing for me is using the Donata set so I can be super fast again. So have my crazy vaulting everywhere, mm -hmm. get in there and Multi-Shot. So I'm, I'm pretty pretty excited for that set. And nice. with the damage scaling potential on that, you know, 400% plus yeah, exactly. uh, extra Multi-Shot damage is... Um, that's something I'm pretty, potentially pretty interested in, so mm -hmm. I think it, I think it could I think it could work pretty well. Hopefully, nice. it'll be as strong as the Marauders or close to, so I can play the other style again. Because that was my favorite Demon Hunter style was playing just uh, vaulting around, super fast vault yeah. Demon Hunter. Yeah, uh -huh. so good. I love the others. Great, great. So that's that. Awesome, nice. Now for me, I guess I'll add, as you guys know, Monk is my favorite class. I've been playing that for a while, and. Um, yeah, from the way it was to where it is right now, the whole changes to the, the set, it's pretty amazing, right? San Ruko said, as I mentioned briefly earlier as well, that the gameplay was kind of mind-numbing and it was too much of a stressful experience for a monk. You were kind of a glass cannon as well, whereas now you can make quality decisions. Wave of Light, and not just Wave of so initially, as I said, uh, I talked about in the beginning, that Wave of Light is the build to go for right now, but the way the set works, they've done such an amazing job at that, uh, is that any spirit spend day that you have uh, will actually trigger the Sanvuko clone. And a little, little secret on top of that is that uh, whatever elemental damage that you're stacking with you, so for instance, if you have 40% fire damage, it's an example, and 20% lightning, the set will automatically recognize that 40% fire damage is the highest damage type you have, and the clone that will be someone will be dealing fire damage. So it's mm, so cool, right? Nice. It's not holy yeah. damage anymore. You're not confused that, hey, should I buff my bells or should I buff my Sanvuko clone? And it's just, you know, little changes like that is pretty good. So for now, people have been playing with Bell Builds. That's what I've been enjoying. 
But the future for that, you know, there's definitely a possibility of using Exploding Palm again. Remember, Gungdoge will also be added in Season 2. That's something, a new legendary we talked on earlier. That's another legendary that's being added and it's going to do cool things. So, yeah, different skills for Monk, different spenders can all become viable thanks to the Sunbuko set. And maybe you can add something else in there. We keep our fingers crossed for the next set. Monks are pretty good, right, guys, now. And I haven't said that for a long time, you know. I make videos and I show mm -hmm. this is a build. They're amazing, but I clearly say this is the highest level Monk can go for. But now, you know, to me, the essence of Monk, same thing like Demon Hunter, as Mr. Ziggy says, for him, a Demon Hunter is about the burst damage, right? For him, anything that, you know, Demon Hunter represents the whole balance between hatred and discipline, this character that's completely out of control, and she needs her discipline to channel, you know, keep herself contained, and then when the hatred goes up, everything dies. For Monk, it's about balance, right? It's about speed, it's about moving fast, and it's about expending the spirit, pretty much similar to a Demon Hunter, but in a controlled manner. So a monk can finally do that right now. He can use his spenders and generators, you know, in a perfect combination. And the gameplay is actually so much more fun. So I enjoy monk very much. I also play a bit of wizard, as I said, looking forward to the sets there as well. And um, to me, yeah, the classes are looking pretty good. At least our two favorite classes are. And if you have any thoughts- The chain me, reaction exploding palms look amazing, by the way. Oh yeah, I you was, saw that. In I think I was watching uh, mods play some. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it looks, looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> Need to try that one out, actually, yeah. So, good, good. So, that's basically, you know, our, our class views. So, for the future of the class, I definitely think, you know, from the, the place it was, back in the days, it was amazing. As I said, Reaper of Souls, when it came out, the class kind of took a backseat for a while. But since then, it's been improving, improving, and now it's getting where it's actually the class is much more fun and it's actually viable as well. So... For me, yeah, monks all the way. I'll, I'm still a monk and uh, I've been enjoying the gameplay so far, guys. So if you haven't checked out the PDR, give it a go. And if you don't want to check it out, wait for the new patch, then, you know, just... Uh, just be prepared items. for a long uh, a long queue time on the PTR, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Two and a yeah. half hour queues for to Torment 6 at the moment. It's crazy. It's oh, so, really? It's so popular. Wow. With that 2,000% legendary buff. How do you feel about that, by the way? The 2,000% oh legendary buff. See, I think that's pretty good, actually, right? And and I was talking to my friend about that. I think they should have something like that for PTR. For first reason is basically people can, you know, it attracts everyone to try out the new thing, which is cool. And the other thing is, the flip side of that is, Blizzard can get feedback on that. You need to find all these items pretty quickly-ish so you can test them out and give them feedback. Because the purpose of a PTR is to obviously enjoy it, but mainly is to figure out if this thing is going to be, you know, viable in the live version of the game. So... To buff the, the whole item find, to me it's pretty good because I have some ideas in mind because if the build is not working, we need to figure out why and we need to post the feedback up. And if it's too overpowered, um, you know, if there's something that's just too crazy, then you, we have to report that as well. And the only way you can do that is by getting the items you're looking for. So it's, it's good. It's really nice uh, community buff. And I think uh, that's the, the culprit to be blamed for the long queues. But hey, that's, uh, you know... A, yeah, I do suspect that a lot of people are just on there because they want to find lots of legendaries and that <laughs> it might have a bit of a negative impact on their view of there the game once they go back to the Lime servers. So yeah. th there is a potential kind of little negative drawback there. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like if they're going to do something crazy like this, like just hand out free legendaries, it should probably be in a closed PTR, like yeah. a, a small invite-only testing group mm -hmm. rather than having a lot of people on there. But I guess Blizzard wanted a lot of metrics or maybe, maybe just to build a bit of hype as well for the yeah. upcoming stuff. Good. But, um, I don't know, it's, it's certainly fun and quite the experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> certainly. Yeah, so, but, but the queues are just strange, yes. Please, yeah, sorry. Carry yeah. On. So I was thinking for the end here, we'll move on to a bit of uh, questions. We've got some questions from the community, and I'll ask the first one here for you, uh, Holly Hermit. Yeah. Uh, from Tim O, what are the changes to the Sun Wuko set? Would you like to explain those briefly? Cool. Hi, Tim O. By the way, guys, thank you. And I can say that for my friend as well. We read all of your comments, by the way. And if some comments uh, we can't reply to straight away, I think this is the place where we're going to do from now on. So at the end of the video, we're going to keep this FAQ session, if you will. And we're going to answer the question. So, Mr. Timo, the changes to Sunruko said people ask me all the time now. And that, as I explained, the two set bonus now is every time you use your Spirit Spender, something like Exploding Palm, something like Lashing Tail Kick, uh, Wave of Flight, and one more skill that I'm forgetting, which is Tempest Rush. You cast a clone that deals a big amount of damage. The four set bonus is that enemy that are hit by that clone will take 500% more damage from the spell that you, the spirit spender you're using. So that's the Sanruko set for you. Remember, if you have a flying dragon, as far as I can see, there is no need to, uh, you know, keep it, I guess keep it with you, why, why would you salvage it? But if you're looking for one, you can stop looking for that one 
and definitely, you know, gear yourself accordingly. So you want something to do with your Spirit Spender. And the reason for that is your Sunruko set has been changed. And don't worry, the changes are retrospective, as in the items you have right now, they will be automatically be, you know, incorporate the new changes. So just log in the next time in the live game and you're going to see a new Sunruko set and have fun. Awesome stuff. So the next question comes in for Cristiano from me, and that is, uh, this one's pretty, um, pretty common kind of question, so I thought I'd bring this one up too. Is Task Room Theo still useful for two, in 2.1.2 for Marauder 6, you know, for the six-piece yeah. Marauder set? So the I mean, Demon Hunter endgame. Mm -hmm. So Task Room Theo, guys, uh, I think probably the best way I can answer this question is actually by quoting one of my other viewers who <laughs> wrote this little green text in this the comment section. This is from Master Devil, and he, he typed this. Grind for Tasker and Theo for all eternity without luck. Season start, play a different class. Randomly find Tasker and Theo in season. Put it in stash, all excited to use it on your Demon Hunter once season ends. Dot dot dot. Lie down, trying not to cry. Cry a lot. Oh, sorry, hear about the change. <laughs> Lie down, trying not to cry. Cry a lot. So, uh, essentially, yes, Tasker and Theo is now fairly, well, useless. It's useless for a lot of builds now. <laughs> The reason being is that your sentries now fire when you fire. Their attack speed scales linearly with your attack speed. So the more attack speed you scale, uh, stack the faster you can put your hatred spenders out and the faster they will attack. No matter how fast you attack, they will attack at the exact same time as you. So Task Grand Theory literally does nothing, basically. What it does do is increases the attack speed of their auto attacks, which if you're attacking all the time, they're not really going to be doing those anyway. And it really makes no difference. Their auto attacks are you know, insignificant. They do basically nothing. So Tasker and Theo is sadly useless, guys, and if you put a lot of work into farming that up, I guess, make a Witch Doctor and use it on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I guess this does bring up another interesting point, though, is yeah. that because Tasker and Theo is out, that was what people were using as their sixth item with um, Ring of Royal Grandeur. Definitely uh, nice. Probably the best option now, I think, is Syndicate. And the reason for that is obviously the fire damage is important, mm -hmm. but uh, the resource cost reduction is uh, crucial now that you they only fire when you fire, which you meet, means you need to have hatred. So reducing the resource cost of hatred as much as you can is uh, very important to getting a lot of damage out. So I think Syndicate's a nice replacement there. So hopefully you guys already have a Syndicate lined up for that. Cool, cool. So nice. the next question for you, uh, Holly Hermit, comes in from Terry Curtin, and that is, what are the implications of the Gungdo gear patch in 2.1.2? All right, Mr. Terry, yes, so the implication is awesome thing, explosive things are going to happen when you actually find that item. Now, this is related to your exploding palm, by the way, and dare I say this is the item. These are braces, by the way, guys, that you find right now, and you probably just chuck them away because, eh, they're not that good. Uh, when you times this awesome item with your Sanvuko set, so going back to Mr. Timo's question, you get these two items, you know, the set and this uh, item together, there are possibilities of dealing a lot of damage. And I'm not sure what, how much damage dealing it will be, but it's something that you can definitely look forward to. And uh, I'm almost very certain that there will be a very high level build coming out of this Gungdog Gung Gear when you actually play the next patch. So expect a Gungdog Gear based Sanwuko set build coming out in the future. So you don't have, I think the, the item, the, by the way, the item, uh, the ones you have right now, they won't be retro respectively chained, so I think, I'm sorry, you have to find oh, really? a new one. Yeah, wow. I'm not sure on that, so please do, don't quote me on that one, but I'm almost 70% sure, if I may, that um, you might have to farm a new one. So, but the good news really is that Exploding Palm, people have been missing that, you can actually start using that again. It's a really, really fun skill. You don't see the big explosion, but you see a lot, lots and lots of, like, like little explosion that makes the screen look go beautiful and you know it's it's fun so Gung Du Gear definitely uh, going to be an awesome item and you times that with San Ruko means good times ahead so on to your question sir all right so for the final question we have uh how does cooldown reduction this is actually not from anyone in particular this just mm -hmm. comes up a lot how does cooldown reduction affect the Marauder 6 build in 2.1.2? So initially, uh, when I read the changes, I thought that cooldown reduction would be almost pointless. Like it'll affect your other skills, but I didn't think it would affect sentries because of the new charge system. Because the way the charge system is worded is that uh, it's charge recovery, like when you recover a charge. But mm -hmm. uh, that still, uh, but despite that, is counted as a cooldown. So what happens is uh, cooldown reduction will uh, allow you to recover charges more quickly. Now, I still kind of stand by the idea that cooldown reduction may not be as important. It kind of depends on um, how you're playing exactly and the content you're doing. 
So what happens is uh, now currently with the new Marauder set, you can put down, well, with the century changes, you can put down all three or all two of your centuries uh, quickly, very quickly. It takes, there's no cooldown associated with that, so you can get them all down essentially instantly. Mm -hmm. So cooldown reduction doesn't help that, but what it does help is if you're moving constantly and needing to reposition your, reposition your centuries all the time, cooldown reduction will assist with that because it'll get you your charge back quicker. You can maybe get your charge back in four seconds instead of eight seconds. And then uh, you could reposition it. Now, if you're playing something like a uh, a build that uses vaults, so you're getting around very quickly and maybe engaging each pack a little bit more quickly, then that cooldown re recovery or cooldown reduction could be could be fairly important. So it's not it's certainly not completely useless. I don't think it is. A, I personally don't think it's as important as it was once before. I think what's now important is uh, hatred uh, or resource cost reduction. I think that's way more important than cooldown reduction. But uh, it still has some use. So if you have a bunch of nice cooldown reduction gear, it's not going to be completely useless. Nice. I think that's in general is pretty good. I was thinking about that, mate, as you were saying that uh, resource cost reduction would be the new thing, you know, would be the new cooldown reduction in the next patch because at least for demon hunters and monks, that you want your spenders to cost as little as possible so you can expend lots of them, right? So I think that might be the case, right? That uh, I'm not sure, but uh, definitely the way the trend is going so far, yeah, cooldown reduc cost reduction, definitely the way to go forward. Cost reduction hype. Uh -huh. <laughs> you heard it first here, guys. But yeah, anyways. So uh, I think, this so I think that's nice. probably does it for mm -hmm. time-wise for today. But uh, it's been awesome chatting D3. I love like doing podcasts and talk shows like this, just uh -huh. chatting with someone else who's really interested in the game about the game I'm passionate about. It's awesome. Love it. Yeah, so <laughs> so thank, thank you for uh, approaching me with doing this. Hey, hey, come on. Thank you for saying yes, guys. You know, close your ears again, by the way, Ziggy. You're not supposed to hear this, my oh, friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, guys, please, if you're on my side, definitely do for... Uh, if you live under a rock and if you don't know who this guy is, definitely go and check out his channel. I'll link it in the description and on the video. Uh, go there, say hello to him and watch his videos because you will learn a lot. Not just about Diablo, but other games. Um, and about the schedule, you can, by the way, op you open your ears now. Uh, I'll tap or something, that way you'll know, or I'll type a message. Well, I guess I'll return the favor a little bit here, and guys, you oh. should definitely give Holly Homer to follow, because he's one of the few people in the Diablo 3 community that takes some initiative and tries to create awesome things, so I think that's definitely worth a follow. Uh, I don't know about that, but uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, guys, for you, by the way, um, as I said, the podcasts are kind of random, right? They happen at whatever time, and it's because of some... Uh, real life uh, things I have you know I've got commitments that I need to take care of I did talk about that in my last video so uh, you know I've had an awesome guest and we will do this at some point in the near future we don't have a like a, a set in stone date for it but definitely expect more podcasts from us uh, this was our podcast for the day I hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, this has been the Holy Hermit for you and my friend Mr. Ziggy Day oh yes see you guys later we'll see you on the next one bye bye